There have always been challenges when it comes to getting supplies to northern communities in Canada, but now there is a promising new solution on the table. Airships. You can see one behind me now. A new deal between none of its largest airline and France based company Flying Whales is looking to design an airship specifically to run cargo shipments to remote communities. And some experts say it's a long ignored approach that could make a big difference. Joining me now from Winnipeg is Professor of Supply Chain Management at the University of Manitoba, Barry Prentice. Good morning. Morning, Lindsay. So, what is an airship exactly? <laughs> well, a lighter than air vehicle. Essentially, it's a vehicle that displaces more air than it weighs, and so you get uh, lift. I mean, we are all familiar with the Goodyear blimp. Basically, that's what they are. But they're very large and, of course, uh, designed for cargo. And they are piloted, right, by one or two people? Uh, initially, they will be. But, you know, we see the view of the future where they'll be drones, uh, just like many other aircraft will be. Uh, there's no real need to have a pilot on board, and you can do this remotely. Would they move as slowly as they look? <laughs> well, you know, most of us are used to seeing the Goodyear blimp, you know, dawdling around a football field, and people think they're very slow, but in fact, an airship will travel at about 150 kilometers an hour. Hmm. That was the cruise speed of the of the old Zeppelin, so, and people think that you can go faster than that, so uh, they're not quite as slow as people, you know, have a, this idea of. So there are 292 communities in this country classified as remote. Through much of the year, the only option for delivery in many of them is to fly supplies in. What are the advantages of an airship versus a fixed wing aircraft, let's say? Well, the first is, of course, the size of the load. Uh, with a, an airship, you can carry very large loads. Uh, I mean, the, the one that they're talking about from France would be a 60-ton lift airship. And of course, they're very big, so you can have bulky cargo on board. Like if you're taking in building materials, for example, a septic tank or cupboards or bathtub, things that you could never fit on a small airplane. And also, of course, are kind of expensive to move because they are bulky. So uh, that's one of the great advantages for the airship. And landing, uh, you don't need to have a, a long runway and a paved runway as you do with a big airplane. Uh, they can land in a much smaller spot and, and less expensively. And of course, the airship themselves, they don't burn nearly as much fuel because they are lighter than air, you know, they float. And so as a result, you have less pollution and just better economics. That video we were just showing, it was really, really cool to see. So if airships would be used, let's say, to deliver cargo from cities to the north and return empty, that's not a very efficient system, obviously. So what other purposes could they potentially serve? <laughs> well, one of the big ones that people are looking at is critical minerals. Uh, you know, we have a lot of critical minerals in the north, but no one can afford to build the roads to reach them. So one of the ideas is that you have a lot more product moving south from the mine, concentrates, than going north. So that would help to balance the traffic, because you're right, most of the goods coming into the north are, are going there for consumption. Uh, the only thing that could come back, uh, you know, just as a ballast load, could be scrap materials or, for that matter, garbage. Professor, I have to ask you about the challenges, of course, of integrating airships not only into the north, but also into our supply chain model. What challenges do you see? Well, actually, it's not as much as people think. You know, we're, we'd be trucking things as far north as we could uh, on the highways or take it by rail to a place like Churchill, then you transload it onto an airship, and it goes on from there. It's really sort of an ad, adjunct to what we're doing already. It's not really trying to replace anything we already have. And so uh, it would fit in quite well. Uh, the, you know, the regulations for air travel are pretty standard, and they would work for airships the same as airplanes. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that and regulations. How difficult it will it be to secure approval from Transport Canada when the time comes? <laughs> well, you know, it's a new technology in some respects, mm -hmm. and we don't have any history of that in Canada. So it is a slow process. I mean, we do have some problems right now in that uh, there's no regulations on the books in Canada that allows a Canadian person to become an airship pilot. Hmm. Uh, just don't have it. And so, you know, they have to be written. And, and other ones, too, uh, mechanics and so on, uh, haven't got a rating to work on an airship. So there are some things the government has to do to get ready for this. The name of that company is so great, the Flying Whale. That's exactly what it looks like. Uh, Professor Barry Prentice, thank you for your time this morning. My pleasure. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.